Okay, I was looking on uh, YouTube and seen quite a few uh, videos on uh, meters and how to use them and so on. But I didn't really find anything that kind of had my little stamp on it. So I guess I'm going to have to throw my hat in the ring in this thing too. Now, I'm an HVAC tech, so it's going to be uh, meters... Uh, for HVAC techs and the like. So, first one we're going to look at, this is just kind of an overview of meters here. Okay, this is a little $2 special from uh, Harbor Freight. Now, it's a cute little thing. It's got a digital and all that. DC volts, AC volts, DC amps, even does micro amps. Um, it does ohms. And it'll even check your transistors if you'd like. Uh, I suppose this thing works. Uh, I'm not going to trust my life to a $2 meter. And you do trust your life to your meters. So, here's an old antique. It's an old Simpson. I think the last date for calibration on this was 1982. So, uh... It's a clamp meter. It's analog. Got this little clampy thing on it. That's for your amp draw. And analog simply means it's got a needle and a dial. Now this does volts, ohms, and amps. And then you rotate what you want right here. This would work. Uh, the digitals are pretty much bypass these things anymore. And I don't think we're going to use much of this stuff anymore. They're a little delicate, and uh, we can get more accurate with the digital meters. But could be used as a backup meter, I guess. Now this one here, this is a Fluke. And uh, this is a Fluke 333. This is pretty much the standard for the HVAC industry. Uh, it's the meter you pull out first that you start checking volts with. You can do DC and AC volts. You can do ohms up to about, I think, a thousand ohms. And you can do AC amperage. And that's what the clamp's for. Because that clamp, clamp it around the wire just like that Simpson, and it will read uh, the amperage going through the wire if there's any power moving through it. Uh, but this is a good, tough meter. I've had this thing since, oh gosh, middle 90s, and many times I used it every day, all day long. And you can see it's a little knocked around, and the, these meters do get knocked around. These flukes are tough. They do not seem to break easily. Now here's another one. Now this one is a UEI. Now 10 years ago, if you had uh, talked to me about a UEI, I would have told you they're junk. Because I broke every UEI I ever had. However, these things are getting better. Uh, this one I bought for a special use. It does DC amps. Now, most of these things won't do DC amps. It's got a Hall effect sensor in it. And it can... Uh, and it can do DC amps, I think, up to 400. Uh, it's a specialized use. Wouldn't need it much in HVAC, but it, it has everything else. It's got the ohm meter. It's got the volts in DC and AC, and both AC and DC amps. Good, tough meter. Uh, I've been impressed with this thing. It's not a real expensive meter, but it's a pretty good one. Let me start with this one. This is what's left of a Fluke 16. Now the Fluke 16, I, this one I purchased about 1991 or 92. I used this thing for uh, up until about two years ago. And I managed to lift a 120 horsepower uh, outboard motor on its hydraulics and squish it. That's what happened to the display. That's the only reason I'm not still using this meter. This thing is tough, accurate, 
and you can't kill it. Uh, one of the things I used to do commonly was I would leave them on ohms like that and I would hit it with voltage. Well, that used to blow fuses, blow meters, do all sorts of things in, uh, in the meters. When I got this 16, never happened again. Uh, I was kind of sorry to see it break. Uh, did get another 16. Uh, we'll see how long it lasts. I've had it about two or three years. And uh, so far it's been as good as any of them. This one does uh, quite a few things. It's got uh, AC DC volts. It's got uh, ohms and it's a meg ohmer, meg ohm meter, which will go up to several million ohms. You need that. It has, uh, it's got a diode tester. Don't use diode testers much here. Uh, capacitor tester we use all the time and micro amps, DC micro amps. Those are all things we really need. Uh, these, uh, these flukes, I'm kind of a fluke freak uh, because of that original 16. Uh, it treated me so well for so many years that uh, uh, I thought they're pretty good meters. And some of the new stuff they're coming out with the 116, which is a replacement for this 16, it's an RMS meter. Uh, I'm not as impressed with as this one, but uh, I still pretty much of a fluke freak. Now there are some other meters out there that work quite well. Field piece. Field piece is a heck of a good meter. Uh, they actually will be quite a bit cheaper than the fluke because with fluke I gotta buy two meters. I gotta buy the 16 and I gotta buy the 333. I have to have both of these in order to do everything I need. And the uh, field piece, I don't have to. There's also a UEI that's got a double uh, read on it that is pretty good too, and it will do all the things I need it to do in one meter. Uh, also, there's a couple of companies like Milwaukee has started to sell meters, and I didn't really think you know they make good tools, but you know drills and the like, but as for uh, meters, never heard of it. A couple of my students got them. They're pretty good. You know, they uh, seem to last really good. They got a few extra things on them. Uh, they, both the field piece and the UEIs tend to have voltage detectors on their clamp meters. So and there'll be a little tit sticking out here someplace and it will uh, check to see if there's voltage. If it gets near anything that's got voltage on it, it will beep, blink a light, whatever. And that's a good safety tool, uh, could save your life. So, that's meters. And that's just an overview. We're going to start talking about how these things work. Uh, how to, uh, which ones we have to use, which ones we don't need and which things are most reliable as we go on. This the one on meters is probably going to be fairly long because um, there's a lot to meters they are extremely important to our industry. So that's the first part on meters.